South African big wave surfer Frank Solomon has started a non-profit called Sentinel Ocean Alliance for the purpose of empowering kids to lead a better life through teaching them how to surf. For many of the kids in the program, a life of poverty and crime is the only path forward. Frank is hoping to make a difference in their lives by keeping them in the water and off the streets. This year, Sentinel Ocean Alliance won Sports Charity of the Year in South Africa, and Frank hopes to add a classroom and new curriculum to the program in the coming years. This is Transformed, Sentinel Ocean Alliance. My name's Frank Solomon. I'm a professional surfer. I grew up in a small town called Hout Bay in Cape Town, South Africa. And it's where I learned to surf and how I got my love for the ocean. Here goes the wave. Catch it. Woo! <laughs> Hout Bay is this really incredible town surrounded by beautiful mountains, you have the Atlantic Ocean, and then on one side you have the poor fishing community of Hungberg. On the other side you have Mandela Park, informal settlement, and in the middle you have mostly affluent white people. You almost have a mini South Africa within this little town, and I think it's very unique. My name is Anele, surname is Kyobeka. I was born and raised in a small town called Hout Bay, Cape Town. My name is Chadwin, from Hout Bay, Hangburg. People around there know me as Spooky. Yeah, so I'm a surf coach. One day I remember I came down to Hout Bay for a surf, caught a wave, and I tried to get into a battle. I got in it for like two seconds and it hit me because I just lost that focus. So like, just that focus is so important while surfing. Getting a pipe, like a pipe for me is just something I'd really love, like a ride, a minute in a pipe, whereby the only important thing is just seeing that wave break and touching it for me. Emotionally, that would be something else. And if I'd get someone that could teach me how to get into that pipe, I mean, that would be lovely. I've been watching videos and I'm getting better, but that pipe. <laughs> I remember seeing this Facebook video of this kid walking down to the beach from Awa. He got stuck in the crossfire in this riot and he got shot in the face by rubber bullets. It was heartbreaking to see him lying on the side of the road, bleeding. After I saw that, something really shifted inside me and I, and I felt like I really had to do something to try and help the kids and the community to have the same opportunities that I had growing up. They shot him in the mouth. Are you out your mind? I don't really know what had happened on the day, but I had heard that a kid was shot. And for me, an adult, being able, just pointing a gun at the kid and you, an adult, whether you're a policeman, whether you have the authority to do that, is just not acceptable. 
That is how the community is like, man. You see, even kids is unsafe, man. That is not like the only violence that happened to young kids like that, man. Like back, back there in the community, like right through like physical violence, like mental abuse, all of that stuff. That video that I saw actually really altered the course of my life. Uh, up until that point, that all I'd been doing is chasing waves and surfing and seeing that kid getting shot at the same beach where I learned to surf. I think it really shifted the perspective of what I thought was important and it completely altered my life in terms of what I wanted to do and made me focus on trying to help the community and, and try and help my country be a better place for the kids. I contacted Waves for Change and asked them what I need to start a surf school. I met up with Apish and together we got the project going. We needed surf coaches and I put the word out to the communities and found Chad from the Hungberg fishing community and Apish helped me find Anelia from Awa. We started small with the Saturday Surf Club and it slowly grew from there. When I met Chad, he was picking up litter for the city of Cape Town, earning 90 rand a day. Now he's a qualified lifeguard and surf instructor and is changing kids' lives. The kids come down there, they, they never like really have fun the way we have fun on the beach, man. Like having fun back in the community, they always bring in trouble and stuff like that, man. They're always catching on nonsense. So then down here, then like get to like express themselves like what happy really is, man. Now they really want to be, man, as kids, man. I just want them to be successful in life, man, and be good role models for the next generation, man. Now, growing up, these two townships had these, this, this phobia of not just getting along. I mean, growing up, it was even difficult to go up to Hangburg to just play a game of football without being chased by dogs back home. By doing this for me is very, very important and vital because that's where our kids get to come together as one and that separation of like generations that had been happening before them gets to stop. Where we all as one through the love of surfing and the ocean as one. Seeing these kids surf is like a wonderful feeling, not just for me, but I could see in their eyes as well that they love what they do. I mean, that feeling when you see a kid catch a wave, and the first thing they do when they stand up for their first time is look back to see if the coach is looking at them and trying to like high five them and make sure that they notice what the kids are doing. Frank or Chad and I started this in partnership with Ways for Change and that's where it started for me. I had been involved in like life saving before here in Hout Bay, but like always, like some organization that just come down to townships, they run this stuff and when they feel like they've had enough, they just walk away and our kids are just standing there without nothing to do and what that, end, that ends up with our kids doing stuff that they're not supposed to do, and some of them end up in places where they never thought they would be. Being able to stand for the first time on the board is a sign of success. Even though I'm not a pro surfer, I'm not the Mikey Fabs, I'm not the Frank Solomons, but I was able to stand up on the board. That's success for me. And you can just add on top of that and eventually you become the Mikey Fab, the Frank Solomon. And you, before you know it, you're out there surfing in the WSL, yeah, the World Surf League. I 
The ocean, I don't know how to explain it, man, but it's just emotionally for me, it's just something else. It's beyond going to a psychologist, sitting down and talking to a therapist. It's therapeutic on its own. Before I joined the ocean, I had no idea like what life was like outside, man. Let's go surf! We see so many different characters in the program. <laughs> For Chad and myself, these kids remind us of ourselves when we were growing up. We had opportunities while growing up, but they kept fading. We don't want this to fade for these kids. We are going to make sure of that. I got the chance, the privilege of doing what I love and make a living out of it. I mean, what else could I ask for? Now we have over 150 kids a week coming down and surfing and learning about the ocean and life-saving. I don't think that stoke of surfing goes away once it gets inside you. It's there for life. Whether you're getting barreled for the first time or just going straight, that stoke never goes away. When I see the kids riding waves and just having fun with huge smiles on their faces, that's when I know this program is working and it gives me the drive to keep coming back each week and make sure this program is here for them.